Hi everyone, once again welcome to my to my garden. It's uh, looking quite different to when you when you last saw it. It's a bit a bit more neat <laughs> and it's also a lot greener because we're well into summer now so you can see um, that everything has a lot more foliage. We've got some flowers etc. So everything's looking quite beautiful and my wonderful husband has put a little fence up at the back there to enclose my herbs which is great. What I'm actually here to talk about today is uh, Photo Lacquer. A lot of people would know Photo Lacquer Americana as pokeweed but I'm also going to show you and highlight the differences between pokeweed or what we know as pokeweed and inkweed which is the Photo Lacquer of Tandra. Now both of these um, I have known many herbalists to use uh, interchangeably but if you're wanting to know the difference between the two and which one you're using and to make sure that you're actually using pokeweed rather than inkweed because that's what you're comfortable with uh, as most of the research is actually uh, connected and most of the historical use is actually connected to pokeweed which is the one that I'm showing you now. So just to highlight a few differences for you as you can see here we've got we've got the berry growing and they're really quite far apart the berries on that on that stem you'll notice also that the stems are really quite pink the leaves are large and the segments of the stems between the leaves are actually quite long. There's Tess there in the background. She's always around with me when I decide to make a video. Somehow she knows. Also you'll notice with the flowers, again, they're quite far apart. There's a lot of, a lot of space. They also, when the berries are forming, they droop down the stems and the foliage is quite a rich, a rich green. And then on the back there, you can actually see again, the venation is a very pale pink color. And there's a lot of pink basically going right through this plant. Now the reason I'm highlighting the differences is because here in Australia they both grow uh, wild in certain places. They don't where I am, therefore uh, these are both um, cultivated plants in pots. So now we have the inkweed and what you'll see is oh, that, now let me show you over here, this is probably a good one to show you, this one's actually ripening so it's quite bright. So you'll see that the, the berries are much closer together, they're very tight and they actually grow straight up and you'll see that with the flowers and the berries all the way through. So it's quite a different presentation. You'll also notice that the leaves are much smaller. And the gaps between on the stems, the gaps between the leaves, where's a bit that I can show you clearly. See there, the gaps here between the leaves are much shorter. And it tends to be a much bushier plant on the whole. You've also, even though you do have, you can see, you can see just in there, I'm not sure how clear that is, but you can see there is a hint of pink in there, but it's not anywhere near. Now the sun's coming out, so it's not as clear. 
Ah, there we go. See there? You've got that pink highlighting. And then on the back of the leaf, you'll notice that it's nowhere near as strong the pink colour as it is on the photo lacquer americana so if you're actually out foraging and you're looking at the different or you come across uh, what you think might be a pokeweed just take those simple things into consideration the lack of pink the smaller foliage the dead giveaway is the is the berries and the flowers they're much tighter and they grow upwards that in itself because the the foliage might vary but that flower the pattern of the flower and the berry that doesn't vary at all and here's one that's actually started to to ripen up can we get a clear view of that not really so that's the difference between those two i hope that's helpful um just as a quick rundown we um a lot of people actually as far as the part of the plant that you use with poke uh a lot of people historically used it as food the leaf but only the very new growth it's an incredibly toxic plant and it has to be has to be prepared in a very particular way so I also know that some people take one single berry a day for lymphatic and um, lymphatic issues and to uh, increase their defenses against illness for the immune system and but here in Australia we generally herbalists tend to use the root we don't use the berry the leaves or any other part of the plant we specifically use the root and in the most minute doses uh, any higher doses are highly toxic and can cause extreme problems and death so I don't recommend actually don't recommend you uh, use this herb if you don't know exactly what you're doing but i hope that's helpful i hope you've learned something and uh, thank you for joining me in the garden once again bye bye